Okay, so uh, in this section, we're going to look more at some states of matter and chemical properties and changes. But first, I wanted to do a quick little look at this periodic table. So this periodic table, if you notice the following elements in red, so here we go, here we got hydrogen, and then we got this block. All these elements in red are gases. So I'm just going to put over here, gases. And then any elements that are in blue, no, I didn't want to scroll in there, any elements in blue are liquids. So there are two here. So I'm just going to circle them. We got bromine and we got mercury. So they are liquids at room temperature. And then everything else that's black is a solid. So the rest are solids. Okay, now the other thing I want to break this into is metals and non-metals. And one important thing to see here is this staircase. This staircase helps break it up into our metals and non-metals. And when we look into the periodic table, we're going to further break this up into groups and families. But for now, we're just going to break it into metals and non-metals. So over here, we have metals. And then over on the right side of the staircase, we have the non-metals. So non-metals. There we go. So it's that staircase that cuts it through that breaks it into metals and non-metals. And we do have some transition metals. So we have normal gases, but once again, we're going to get through that later when we further go through that periodic table. So here's just a quick classification of metals, non-metals, solids, liquids, and gases. All right. The three states of matter. Hopefully you've taken this in earlier science classes. We have solid, liquid, or gas. With solid, our particles are super close together. So they're rigid. Anything that's solid is a fixed shape and has a fixed volume. It cannot be squished. A liquid, those particles are moving around a little more there's a more space in between them. They're not rigid. There's no fixed shape, but there is a fixed volume. So those particles are still staying put. They're not floating away. So there's still that fixed volume, but there's no fixed shape. And that's why we're able to pour liquids into all different kinds of fancy glasses because it will take the shape of that container. A gas is not rigid. It's not a fixed shape and it has no fixed volume. So there we see the particles are really moving around, lots of space in between. There's no um, fixed shape, so I can put it into whatever container, it's just gonna float, and there's no fixed volume. So here are some pictures of our three states of matter. We have a balloon, so the air in a balloon. In ice, we have a solid, and then that liquid in that cup, well, is a liquid. Cats are liquids, so I kind of thought this was a cute little uh, picture. I don't know if this classifies as a meme. I'm not sure, but uh, cats are liquids. Liquids take the shape of the container while maintaining a constant volume. That's it, so cats are liquid. Liquid takes the shape of its containers. So here's another example how cats are liquid. And then um, another picture of our states of matter also showing the increase of temperature. So as we increase the temperature, we make it warm, we give it more heat, those particles are moving even faster, we get a gas. And then we have our liquid. So this is um, good to use water as an example. So if we start heating up water, eventually it's going to start to boil and then we're going to get that gas forming and then we're going to get that steam. But if we lower the temperature, we're going to create a solid so that water is going to freeze and we'll end up with a solid. 
All right, so once again, let's quickly go over our physical properties. A physical property describes a characteristic of a substance that can be observed or measured without changing its composition. So without altering its atoms or molecules, we are not destroying anything. And a physical change is a change in size or form of a substance without changing the chemical properties. So a physical change would include dissolving, melting, cutting, boiling, bending, mixing. Those are all physical changes. We are not destroying that substance. So what could we do to water that doesn't change its physical properties? We could... Freeze it. So freeze. We can boil it. We can mix it with salt. Maybe we want to add more water to it. Um, we want to add some food coloring. Maybe we want to dump it out if it's in a container. Nothing's happening to change that water. It's still water. So those are physical properties. What, we, what can we do to magnesium that doesn't change its physical properties? So we could cut it. We could heat it up. We could smell it. That's not going to do anything. We could boil it, so we can melt, um, we can bend it, we can put it into water, and we're still going to have magnesium. So here is a list of physical properties. So looking at the state of matter, solid, liquid, or gas, color and luster, melting point, boiling point, density, solubility, vol um, volatility, ductility, crystal shape, conductivity, hardness, texture, malleability, and smell. So you don't have to write these down, it's just helpful to go over them. So malleability is when a substance can be pounded or rolled into sheets but uh, it's best to warm it up first so here we got good old aluminum so we can make that to an aluminum foil texture is a feel of the surface of a substance whether it's rough or smooth so here we have a picture of raw gemstones which are rough and then once we cut them and polish them then we get these smooth gems over here then we can look at the hardness. So a substance ability to resist being scratched. And we actually have a chart called um, Ma's Hardness Scale. So it's measured through 1 to 10. Baby powder would be considered a 1. There's no hardness at all. Whereas a diamond is a 10. So I don't know if you know much about like cutting glass, but um, those who cut glass are going to use a diamond tip tool so that they can cut it. We have conductivity, so the ability of a substance to conduct electricity or heat. So we can have a conductor or we may have an insulator. We have crystal shapes, so when particles in a substance line up in a regular pattern, smooth surfaces and sharp edges are created to give the crystal shape of the substance. So that's like sugar. Sugar has a crystal shape or salt has a crystal shape. Ductility is any cell that can be stretched into a long wire without breaking. So this often needs to be heated. And copper is an example of a substance that's very ductile. And that's why we use it in a lot of our cords. Solubility is the maximum amount of a substance that dissolves in water. 
and it is temperature dependent. So sometimes if we heat it up, it's going to uh, mix a lot quicker. Density is amount of mass in a given volume of a substance. More dense means more mass given uh, per volume and then less, dan less dense means less mass per given volume. So in this picture, we have uh, a cork. It's not very dense, that's why it can float. A rock is very dense and that's why it sinks. And I think that's why Miss Rizzling sinks as well. We have boiling point, the temperature at which a liquid changes into a gas. It is also the same temperature that a gas changes to a liquid as it is called that condensation point. So they happen at that same temperature. So it's like that just perfect temperature where the liquid turns to a gas or it's just on the edge where that gas turns back to that liquid. So that special point there, just like we have, um, Oh, and then melting point, same thing, except we're going solid to liquid or liquid to solid. But it's just like we have um, our freezing point, right? That freezing for for water is zero. So and I, maybe that's even my next slide. Let's see. Oh, showing more melting. Nope. Okay. So just like freezing. Freezing point for water is going to happen at zero. So zero is that special number where um, either we're going to start, it's just like that tipping point we're going to get a liquid freezing into a solid or it's that tipping point that um, we're going to start seeing that melting so especially in the winter time when it turns to that zero we might see some melting going on so color or luster so color um self-explanatory luster is that shininess or the dullness. So those gold coins, super, super shiny. That concrete, eh, it's pretty dull. So not very much luster. Right, we're gonna do an activity here in class.